It's a great pleasure to welcome you back to Kanguka. My name is Chris Nikumana. I'm the host of this broadcast. Today is Wednesday and I want to share with you some words of hope in the topic of preparing your day. I'm very encouraged when I hear people testify that their lives were transformed ever since they started preparing their day. If you prepare your day before you leave your home, it's a clear indication that you have faith in God. When you prepare your day, it means that you want to start your day with I am. You want to receive something from him. You're saying, I want strength from I am. I want to receive wisdom from I am. I want to be led by I am in everything I do today. You need to understand that when you pray, you're receiving life from God. You can give life to God, but you receive it from Him. Let me tell you that you can isolate yourself with God in prayer and remain exactly the same. I want every listener to know that if you prayed in the morning, if you put yourself aside with I am and you declare His majesty, and his power and you praise him and you give thanks to him for all the things he has already done for you. If you spoke with him this morning, you need to know that you've received something from him this morning. If you go before I am in the name of Jesus Christ and you pray in the spirit and truth, you can't remain the same. It's impossible to remain the same. That's why I keep encouraging you to pray. You may not see any changes with your physical eyes. You may go to pray and feel like nothing has changed when you're done praying maybe you still have the same physical pain that you had before you started praying you don't feel any change you didn't receive a vision you didn't experience any manifestation in your body but that's okay if you've prayed with faith and you believe in the God that you can see and you've prayed to him in the name of Jesus you need to understand that something happened when you pray I'm very encouraged by the example of Moses for more than 10 years I've been very encouraged by the story of when Moses returned from meeting with God on the mountain. Moses didn't look the same when he came back. Let me remind you that in the old covenant, everything was done in the flesh. There were fleshly commandments. The old covenant law was carnal. But as new covenant believers, we need to learn from what happened in the old covenant. We need to understand that those things were a shadow of things to come and they have a spiritual meaning today. So God called Moses and he told him to go up on Mount Sinai so they can have a discussion. And Moses left the children of Israel and he went to the top of the mountain to meet with his God. Moses met with God and God spoke with him and he gave him the law. But when Moses came down from the mountain, he didn't look the same. The skin of his face was shining because he had spoken with I am. I really love Exodus chapter 34 verse 29. It says that Moses came down from Mount Sinai with two tablets in his hands and he didn't know that the skin of his face was shining because he had spoken to I am. I hope that you understand this. His face was shining because he had spoken with the Lord. I really love this part. Moses met privately with I am and he was different when he came back. If you read the whole chapter, you will see that the children of Israel couldn't even look at his face because something supernatural had happened to him. So Moses had to put a veil on his face when he was with the children of Israel. Verse 34 says that when Moses went to speak with the Lord, he would take the veil off. But when he came back, he couldn't speak to the children of Israel without covering his face. They couldn't look at him because he was full of God's power. Verse 35 says that whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, it was shining and Moses had to put the veil on his face. It means that whenever Moses went to speak with I am, he came back different. He was empty handed and he came back with the tablets of the law in his hands. He went as a normal person but he came back with his face shining so brightly that no one could look at him. So if you pray in the morning and you start your day with I am, you need to know that something happens in the spiritual realm. You receive something on a spiritual level and the demons can see that you spoke with I am. From a spiritual perspective, you always gain something when you start your day with I am. I 
Enjoy the second part of the broadcast and we're going to continue our study of the book of Samuel. We're still in chapter 2 and yesterday we were looking at verse 12 which talks about the sons of Eli the priest. Eli had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. Verse 12 says that the sons of Eli were corrupt and they didn't know the Lord. It means that they didn't fear God. Yesterday I was telling you that Eli made a serious mistake. Because he had compassion and love for his sons, he brought them to the house of God so they could minister together as priests. There is nothing wrong with doing ministry work with family members, but you need to make sure that those family members truly fear and honor God. If they don't fear God, they will become a door that Satan can use to come and destroy God's work. This happens a lot in many churches today. Many churches are led by a group of people who are all from the same family. In most cases, those people aren't appointed because of their spiritual maturity, but they are appointed because they are related by blood. But blood ties shouldn't be considered ahead of spiritual gifts. It's not because someone is related to you that he should automatically become a candidate to replace you or to assist you in ministry, especially if he doesn't have the spiritual gifts that are needed for that position. A person who doesn't fear God should never be involved in ministry. It doesn't matter if that person is your wife or your child, you need to keep that person away from your ministry. If you don't do this, you will fall into a trap. I will say it again, if your wife or your child or your brother doesn't fear God, if your relative doesn't have a true calling from God, or spiritual gifts, then you shouldn't let that relative be involved in the ministry. If you include that person in the leadership of your ministry just because it's a relative, you're opening a door to Satan. Not only are you putting that person at risk, but you are also putting yourself at risk because you are bringing a curse upon God's work. That's the mistake that Eli made. He let his emotions cloud his judgment. He allowed his sons to minister with him as priests because he was getting older and he thought that it would be good to get them involved so they could continue the work after his death. The issue wasn't that he brought family members into ministry. The real problem was that those two sons didn't fear God. They didn't honor God. They were living in sin and their father was fully aware of that. If you read verse 13 to 16, we see some of the very shameful and scary things that these two men did. They had no fear of God alone. They would send their servants to take some of the meat that the people were sacrificing to the Lord, and they would keep it for themselves. They committed a great sin before God because they despised his offerings. People would bring offerings to honor God, but these corrupt men would steal from them because God wasn't important to them. They were doing terrible things, but it's Eli who was responsible for this mess because he allowed his sons to minister as priests. But wicked men should never be allowed to do God's work. You can see from verse 22 to 25 that when Eli heard about all the evil things his sons were doing, he called them and he tried to give them some advice. He told them that he had heard that they were sleeping with the women who came to the tabernacle to bring their offerings. Can you imagine that? It's like a pastor who would sleep with women who came to church to pray and who commits those evil acts right in front of the church. The sons of Eli were doing evil things. Satan was using them to bring dishonor to the name of God. This was happening so many times that their father decided to talk to them about it. In the same way, today there are many wicked things that are happening in secret in many churches and people think that God is still on their side because he is not pushing them immediately. But let me tell you that if you are living in sin, if you're doing evil things which don't bring honor to God, then God is not pleased alone by what you're doing. Even if it doesn't strike you, God is not pleased alone by your actions. So the sons of Eli treated God with contempt and their father tried to reason with them. But you can see in verse 25 that they refused to listen to him. Before I continue to talk about the sons of Eli, let me go back to verse 20 for a moment. I want to point out something important in this verse. In this verse, we can see that Eli prayed for Elkanah and his wife Hannah. 
It says that Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, The Lord give you descendants from this woman for the loan that was given to the Lord. This is a very important prayer. Hannah used to be barren and God gave her a child called Samuel and she gave him back to the Lord. So Eli was praying so that Elkanah and Hannah could conceive other children who would replace the one that he had offered to the Lord. God willing, I will continue this topic tomorrow. May I am bless you. I wish you all a great day. If you want to repent or you transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.